Hey, Teresa. How you doing? All right. I've got your poster. I've got your, your post up, I should say. So you've got Ernest Hemingway. That's fantastic. Yes, an extremely bold individual to say the least. So let's let's go ahead and jump over to the work. Now we've got you've got you did a great job here, and we've got enough information here. You're really set up for success. We've got um, the laureate. We got your tagline. That's fantastic. Uh, and then we got this wonderful bio information, and you got your timeline events, and then the images that you're using for consideration. So that's just fantastic. You are ready to go. Now, what I want to do at this point is I want to jump to your sketches and I want to take a look at some of the requirements. So if we take a look at what's required in the, the assignment, we can see that the front of the poster includes the, the poet laureate's name, I'm sorry, the, um, the laureate's name, the Nobel laureate's name uh, or the subject and then, um, and then the, the tagline. But you've got a lot of other stuff here. You've got the, the Nobel Peace coin. You've got this other information, this information. You say a collage, which we, we, you, you're not um, permitted to use a, a collage per assignment requirements. And we can see that in the uh, requirement that says on the back of the poster, a photographic image may only be used with the Nobel laureate and his or her picture must appear in the back of the poster. So the only photograph that you can use is on the back and that is a a, a uh, photograph of the, of the laureate okay so these are out this these collages that you have here these are these are out um, unless they're illustrations unless you want to include some sort of an illustration and I'm not, I'm not sure this collage is the way to go because you really want to keep things really simple here especially on the front of the poster where you're just introducing by name and a tagline and then you know that's going to work into the back of the poster. So I think this is a little much right here. Um, and we see the same thing here. We've got the, the Nobel coin, but don't forget the front of the poster only includes the poet laureate's name. And let me just jump over to some of these examples. Um, okay, just the name, the tagline, and we see that formula over and over. Okay, just the name and the tagline just the name and the, well this is the subject and then the tagline and then the, the, the names which is permitted also by the way and then name tagline okay so that's all that's permitted on the front we can see that these name tagline name or subject tagline and then name tagline okay so none of this other a collage Nobel coin this stuff is not permitted just the name and the tagline okay um, now, the one thing I'm seeing in, in your sketches is I'm not seeing a real uh, dependence or a real kind of propensity leaning towards conceptual development. And I think that's one of the things that can really take this, uh, this, this project and, and really push it over the top in terms of depicting connotative or negative or connotative or uh, denotative meaning. Um, based on some of the uh, visual decisions that you make. And I think this portion of the course lecture is of specific relevance uh, regarding that last comment in that this is really showing you how you can make these choices and how you can add denotative and connotative meaning to a word simply by the configuration and some other conceptual choices that are made. Okay, these are really important. These simultaneity, simultaneity uh, uh, visual transformation, substitution, visual exaggeration, visual correspondence. Those are really important strategies that you can use to your favor in this assignment. I'm gonna show you some examples in a second, but moving forward, I would like to see a new set of sketches for Sunday. And in those sketches, I would really like you to develop a good, strong, solid conceptual approach. So in other words, we've been studying these the, the relationship between image and type, right? We've been studying the relationship between type and image as it is, is associated with and how as it's related to the development of connotative and denotative meaning based on some of the visual choices that are made. And that is what I want to see incorporated into your sketches. I can give you a really great example here. I've got this example up right here. I've used this example. You've seen it. If you've looked at any of the other uh, critique videos, you, you've seen this. But this is probably the best visual 
uh, a conceptual development that I've seen while teaching this class, and I teach this class quite often. This is strong stuff here. Okay, Martin Luther King Jr., right? It's perfectly legible, right? But we can clearly see that there's some visual substitution going on right here. This designer has elected to use the equal sign for the E. And this is specifically of relevant importance because equal sign indicates equality, which is what Martin Luther King stood for, but it also represents the E in Luther. Okay, let's take that a step further and let's jump to the back of the poster where this, this uh, designer has successfully used continuation to establish that equal sign as the timeline. So you can see a really strong conceptual development presentation and continuation onto the back of the poster. So this is a really, really great example. It's a very strong concept and it's presented beautifully. And I'm kind of thinking that that we, we I'm kind of why I'm, I'm trying to steer you in that direction because I think right now we we're, we're not seeing that heavy concept. Uh, conceptual values, that's con that heavy conceptual development that we see in the, the equality example for Martin Luther King. Um, we can see some other examples too. I mean, here, here, the concept here is that the type is kind of meant to look very, very vintage as it represents the year in which this, this took place, but it also kind of represents the x-ray itself, what an x-ray might look like. Okay, so that's the concept, and then we've got that concept successfully drawn through the back of the poster using the actual image as the timeline. Okay, and we can see, again, here's another good example using the, the, these, this, the blood. Uh, the eye, the dot, the tittle on the eye represents blood, and that blood is also represented here in the timeline, and the mosquito t traveling with his blood delivering malaria. As we know, malaria is a blood-borne um, um, condition that is, is transferred by mosquitoes. So really super heavy concept here. And then again here, this is, I think this is a particle acceleration here. So we can see this right here is kind of alluding to that fact. And then right over here, it, it's, it's even continued over to, to the, the timeline itself. So we can really see some strong concept development here. That's what I would like you to, to work on on your sketches for the rest of this week. Um, this is a great presentation. I'd like you to read it, then read it again, then read it a third time until it sinks in. Pages, uh, there's some pages in the book. Um, boy, you know what? Hang on one second. Uh, but in addition to this presentation here and this week five presentation, also take a look at pages 115 to 120. In, in the textbook. And that shows you some wonderful applications of simultaneity, uh, transformation, substitution, exaggeration, and visual correspondence. And really think, begin to think of how you can start drawing conceptual ties between, you know, these, these, this development and these strategies to create uh, ideas of denotative and connotative meaning. And, and, and really how you can work this into your concept and continue that concept from the front to the back of the poster. Okay, so those are my recommendations moving forward, Teresa. I'd like to, I think I've got everything is in place for you, um, but the only thing I'd like to see is uh, additional sketches really trying to turn, tie in some, some concept, okay? Uh, as I said, any questions, please feel free to let me know. Thank you very much.